under you. Over hill, over jail, through bush, through briar, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire. I did wander everywhere, swifter than the moon steer, and I served the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. The cows have told her pensioners be, and their gold coats thought you see. Those three rubies, fairy favors, and those freckles did their sing. I must go seek some dewdrops here, and hang a pearl in every house of fear. Farewell, thou law of fear. I'll be gone. Our fairy queen and her elves come here and gone. The king doth keep his revels here tonight. Take heed the queen come not within his sight, for Oberon is passing, fell and wrath, because that she, as her attendant hath, a lovely boy stolen from an Indian king, she never had so sweet a changeling, and jealous Oberon would have the child, knight of his train to trace the forests wild. But she, for perforce, withholds the boy, crowns him with flowers, and makes him all her joy. And now they do not meet in grove or green, by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen. But they do swear so that all elves for fear creep into acorn cups and hide them there. Either I mistake your shape and make the flight, or you are that true neighbor sprite called Robin with them. <laughs> Thou speakest aright. I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile, when I a fat and bean-fed horse beguile, neighing in likeness of a filly foal. Sometime lurk I in a gossip's pole, in very likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks, against her lips I bob, and upon her with a dulap pour the ale. The wisest ant, telling the saddest tale, sometime for three-foot stool mistaken me. But slip I from her bum, and now topple she, and Taylor cries and falls into a cough, and all the choir hold their hips and luff, and wax it in their mirth, and knees, and swear a merrier hour was never wasted there. But room fairy, here comes Oberon. And here, my mistress. Look at you, Oberon. You don't mess by moonlight. Proud to die. Yeah. What jealous Oberon? Fairy, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. <laughs> uh, Terry Rashwalton, am not I thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from Fairyland, and in the shape of corn sat all day playing on pipes of corn, adversing love to amorous Philida. Why art thou here? Come from the farthest steep of India, but that, forsooth, the buskined mistress, your bouncing Amazon, and your warrior love to Theseus must be wedded. And you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus? For shame. Titania, glass at my credit with Apollo, knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Did thou not lead him through the glimmering night from Paraguna, whom he ravished, and make him with fair Ageley's break his faith with Ariadne and Antiope? These are the forgeries of jealousy, <laughs> and never since the middle summer spring met we on hill in dale, forest or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook or in the beached margin of the sea to dance our rhythms to the whistling wind. But with thy brawl thou hast disturbed our sport! Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling back in the land hath every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The human mortals want their winter here, no night is now with him or Carol blessed. Therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And thorough this distemperature, we see the season's altar. Hoary-headed frosts fall on the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and at old Heim's thin and icy crown. An odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as a mockery set. The spring, the summer, childing autumn, angry winter, change their wanted liveries. 
in the world by their increase now knows not which is which. And the same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies with you. What? Should Titania cross her Oberon? I do but beg a little changeling boy to be my henchman. Set your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was a fortress of my order, and in the spiced Indian air by night, full often hath she gossiped by my side. Her womb then rich with my young squire. But she, being mortal of that boy, did die. And for her sake do I rear up her boy. And for her sake I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus' wedding day. If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Give me the boy and I'll go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies away! We shall chide down right if I longer stay. Uh, well, go thy way! Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury! <sighs> My gentle Park, uh, come hither. Thou rememberest when once sat I upon a promontory, and heard a mermaid utter such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude seas were civil with their song to hear the sweet sea maid's music. I remember. Uh, at that point I saw, but thou couldst not fly between the cold moon and the earth. Cupid, all armed, a certain aim he took at a fair vestal thrown it in the west, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow as if it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. I did but watch where that bolt of Cupid fell. It fell on a little western flower before milk white, now all purple with love's wound in the maidens, call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower. The herb I showed thee once, the juice of it, on sleeping eyelids laid, can make man or woman madly dote on the next live creature she sees. <laughs> Fetch me the herb, and be thou here again, ere the leviathan can swim a league. A poor girl about the earth in forty minutes. Having once this juice, I'll wash Titania when she is next asleep and drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next live creature that she, waking, looks upon, <laughs> be it lion, or bear, or wolf, or bull, or on meddling monkey, or on busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. <laughs> oh, and ere I take this child from off her sight, as I can with but another herb, I'll make her render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and will overhear their conference. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? One I'll stay, the other stayeth me. Thou toldst me they were stolen unto this wood, and here I am, and woed within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, and yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave your power to draw, and I shall have no more power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? 
Or rather, do I not in plainest truth tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? Oh, and even for that, do I love you the more? I am your spaniel! And Demetrius, the more you beat me, I shall fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, strike me, neglect me, use me. Only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What worser place can I beg in your love, although a place of high respect with me, than to be used as you use your dog? Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look on thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. If you entreat your modesty too much, to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night, and the ill counsel of a desert place with the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege. For that it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore think I am not in the night. Nor doth this wood lack worlds of company. For you and my respect are all the world. Therefore how can it be said that I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? Oh, run from thee and hide me in the bricks and leave thee to the mercy of the wild beasts. Oh. Oh. Run where you will, the story shall be changed. Oh. Apollo flies and Daphne holds chase. The dove pursues the griffin. The mild hide makes speed to catch the tiger. Bootless speed when cowardice pursues and valor flies. I will not stay thy questions, let me go. Where if thou follow me? Do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. Oh. I, in the temple, in the town, in the field, you do me mischief. Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men do. We should be wooed and we're not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere thou to leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he will seek thy love. Have you the herb with you, welcome wanderer? Here it is. I pray you, give it me! I know a bank where the wild thyme blows, where oxlips and nodding violet grows quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and a galantine. There sleeps Titania, sometime of the night, lulled in these flowers and dances with delight. <laughs> and there the snake throws its enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in. And with the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasize. <laughs> Take thou some of it, and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies will be the lady You'll know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Effect it with some care, that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. I pray you, meet me ere the first cock crow. Oh, fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. <laughs> <laughs>